Helen had her own suspicions about Judd being the MVP that week, so that combined with what Andy was saying to her about Judd was enough to get Helen on board with the idea of getting rid of him soon. As I was literally just talking about, Helen couldn't help herself from wanting to make a big move. So after Aaron won the veto, Helen pulled her off to the side and brought up the idea of taking out Judd. Why waste a double eviction on a small fish like Jesse when you could take a shot at a huge catch? Aaron was initially against the idea, but soon enough, there were a handful of players pushing Aaron to make the move, and eventually she obliged. Aaron used the veto to take Jesse off the block, and Judd was blindsided when he was put up as the replacement. I feel like I need to reiterate just how crazy this actually was. Judd was pretty much the second best position player in the entire house, only behind Andy. So for the house to come together on a move like this in such a short time frame is really, really wild. While getting Judd on the block was certainly a group effort, you need to give Andy a lot of the credit for being the one to put Judd's name out there in the first place a couple weeks back. Without Andy consistently pushing for people to watch out for Judd, it's pretty unlikely that Helen would have urged Aaron to make this move during the double, and it's even more unlikely that a large group of people people would have further pressured Aaron to go through with it. But no matter how difficult it may have been, the move had been made and all that was left to do was vote Judd out. This was probably the most emotional 15 minutes of the entire game as almost every single person was in tears as they voted out their friend Judd. Even though everyone recognized him as a threat, they still really liked him, but they knew what they had to do. After all was said and done, Judd was evicted in a unanimous vote of 7-0, to zero, putting an end to the double eviction. And so, like I said, I planted those seeds and then Helen and Amanda were like, if it's a double, what if we take out Judd? And I was like, great idea. Like, you guys thought of that all on your own. It was oh, a wonderful plan. I'm down. Yeah, Aaron, that was amazing. All right, can we back to I don't want to waste a double eviction on someone like Jesse. I want to take out a big fish. We're going to all vote Judd. Everybody wants Judd out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't listen to that, Andy. Don't listen to that heart at the door. Don't listen to that. I know that getting Judd out is the right move for my game, but it just still feels just icky, like voting about it. It doesn't feel right. And so I know that it's the right move, but my heart is telling me that it's not. I will go home if I don't do this. Jesse, I'm taking you off the block. And I have to put this person up because they have been playing me and thinking that I would not realize that this was happening, Judd. I'm not playing you. Where'd you get that? Chad. Don't, I don't want to hear. Aaron. I don't want to hear. Hi, Andy. Hi, Julie. Please cast your vote to evict. I very reluctantly vote to evict Judd. 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 By a unanimous vote, Judd, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. This was a really, really great double eviction for Andy. As I've said, Judd was the biggest threat to Andy's long-term success in the game, so having him sniped out of the house during the double eviction was the best possible case scenario for him. But even so, Andy broke down after the eviction because of how much it hurt him. This was the first eviction that really felt like a gut punch to Andy, but there was nothing to do but wipe away the tears and continue looking forward. Now that his biggest threat was gone, Andy's path to the end was clearer than it had ever been, but he still had a long way to go. Up to this point, you may have noticed that Andy had yet to win a competition, and that was mostly on purpose. For starters, Andy had played in almost zero veto comps. The double eviction was literally the first time he competed, but that was fine with him because he didn't want to be put in a spot where he won the veto and had to show his cards. That same logic applies to the HOH comps too. While he did actually try in a few of them, he never cared if he lost because he knew his social positioning would keep him safe. But after seven rounds of gameplay, Andy wanted to show some life in the house, and this was the perfect HOH for him to try and win. Jessie was the consensus house target for practically every single person, so Andy could just target her, make everyone happy, and he wouldn't need to draw any lines in the sand. Plus, by winning an HOH and making it seem like he's getting blood on his hands, Andy looks like a great ally in that he's putting in his fair share of work, whereas in actuality, he's not actually making any hard decisions, and it's just making the obvious move. So, heading into the HOH comp, Andy was gunning for the win. This really was the first week where I was hardcore gunning for the HOH. Jesse was a free agent who I knew that I could just get rid of, like I could just kick out the door and nobody mm -hmm. would care. And so it's like, I'm still showing everyone that I'm here to play and I can win things, but I'm not drawing a line yet. I'm getting rid of someone that everybody wants me to get rid of. 
and I'm not making anybody mad. And so I'm like appeasing everybody still. The competition saw the players try and navigate a ball down a banana and into the slot at the end before your opponent could, and it was a bracket style comp. Andy got ready, began the competition, and absolutely tore it up, taking out Gina Marie, Jesse, and McCray on his win to winning the final nine HOH. I sink it on the first try. It is the best thing that could possibly happen. I am the HOH. Yes. Just to showcase how exceptional Andy had been playing up to this point, watch this segment of everyone's reactions to Andy winning the HOH. I feel cool with Andy winning this HOH. I'm really happy that Andy won HOH. I feel more than comfortable that Andy won HOH. This could be the best possible scenario. Andy and I jive very well together. He's my closest ally in the house. He's in a final three alliance with me, McCray, and himself. I think me and Andy are all pretty cool, you know? Yeah. Legitimately, every single person felt amazing that Andy was in power. And that's not something we ever see happen when someone wins HOH. Anyways, Andy was ready to target Jesse, but of course, Helen approached Andy about possibly switching things up in nominating Amanda and McRae instead. Andy once again told Helen that he thought it would be a bad move, but this was actually a tipping point for Andy. Up to this point, Andy was unsure about which side he was going to choose when it came down to it. Helen or Amanda. But with Helen so willing to make a big move against Amanda, someone who was her ally in the game, then what was to say that Helen wouldn't do the same thing to Andy once Amanda was gone? Helen's cutthroat nature confirmed to him that she would be the more likely candidate to backstab him in the future. So he firmly landed on Team Amanda over Team Helen. I feel like everyone wants Jesse. Here's my thing. I'd put up Amanda McCray. Really? Helen is ready to make a big move and put up Amanda and McCray, and little does Helen know just how tight I am with Amanda and McCray. I'm, I'm afraid of Amanda and McCray, I am. Helen thinks I'm 100% loyal to her, and Amanda and McCray think I'm 100% loyal to them. And one day, Helen came to me, and she was like, we've got to make a move on Amanda. Whereas Amanda was like, I still want to work with Helen. And in that moment, I was like, Helen is the more ruthless cutthroat player. She's coming for Amanda first. She's going to come for me after that. And so it's like, I got to get rid of Helen over Amanda. 